Hello and welcome back to Lost in Translation, where I, Nico, uh, go over my top 10 list of things you are missing if you're reading this week's Torah portion, Lech Lecha, only in English. So we're going to start off today with, uh, with the names Abram and Avraham. Okay, so we're just leaving the disaster of the Tower of Babel, and we're introduced uh, to this new line of, uh, of uh, generations from Noah that ends with Avraham, of, uh, with Avram, and he leaves his place to follow Hashem to the land that he will show him. So what's happening here with these names? Well, if we take a close look here, um, we can see that this name, again, we can uh, take advantage of Chabad's very useful website where they've got the English and the Hebrew right next to each other, right? And the Lord said to Abram, not Avraham, right? It's right here as well. There's the hay is missing from this name, right? <clears throat> so there is a difference here. So we can see in this next line here, the Eescha Lagoy Gado Ve Avrecha Ve Agadla Shmecha Ve Ehe Bracha, right? aggrandize your name okay make your name greater i will make your name great right this here right this we can see this is the same gadol as this here gadol uh for the great nation that he will become um well this letter hey is the same hey that we see in creation when hashem is making et Hashemaim ve'et haaretz. So to increase his name, to make it great, by eventually inserting this hey into his name, is a callback to the state of perfection that creation was before the original fall. All right, number two. So Hashem is telling him to to leave your land, right? Saying here. Lech lecha. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so right here, by Hashem El Avram, Lech lecha ma'atzacha from your land, U mimolta from your birthplace, and U mibit avicha from your father's house. El Haaretz Asher Artsecha, right? You're going to go to the land, Et Haaretz, the land that I will show you. I'm going to bring you to that Ratzon. I want you to leave your desires, Artsecha, and I want you to come to this desire that I will show you. The desire to connect back to Hashem. Okay, so number three. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Let's take a closer look. All right. So this beginning portion right here, this very beginning of the, of the portion is very rich. We're seeing right here in the English, uh, I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse, and all the families of the earth, which we have been associating with the word aretz, shall be blessed by you. But in fact, it's mishpachot ha'adama. So again, this, this inconsistency of Earth connecting back to the word Aretz or Adama, it, it's confusing for us as English readers and it distracts us from the significance because 
Eretz reminds us of desire. Adama reminds us of Adam and Dome, right? Where we have this similarity to Hashem. Okay, and there's a lot going on with the whole Noah issue that we'll take a look at very closely here in the in the next in the next lost in translation moment number four. And Lot was with him. Let's take a little closer look at this. Okay, so how is this connecting back to this idea of Adama? Mm, let's take a look. Lot, Abraham went as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. Okay, well, Lot in Aramaic. Lot in Aramaic means curse. Okay, so we have through these, these three major characters of Adam, Noah, and now Avram, we have this, this constant connection between blessing and curse, and blessing and curse, and blessing and curse. So, of course, we had all the blessings of the garden, and eventually we had the curse of the fall, and the curse of the... Uh, of the of the ground itself, Adama was cursed because of Adam, right? Well, Noah reversed that curse through his olot, his drawing close to Hashem, right? So the curse was uh, was was dismissed, and now we have all. The families of Adam, of Adam, of the Adama that will be blessed through Abraham. He has this great blessing to become a, a great nation, but there's still this curse that's with him. Well, this curse, if what's blessed is the desire to be connected to Hashem, then the curse is the desire for separation. As we see through all these curses, Cain was cursed and he left from the from before Hashem, right? Um, we, you know, Adam, when he was cursed, he was cursed to leave the Garden of Edom and he was no longer as connected with Hashem, right? The, the curse on the Ham was, you know, a removal from the presence of Hashem. So this is the idea. There is this curse that continues to follow us into the desire that Hashem is going to show Avram. Okay, number five. The souls they made there. Let's take a closer look. So, and Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother, and all their possessions that they had acquired, and the souls they had acquired in, in, in Haran. Well, this is a perfect example of how we're taking the, the Hebrew and we're changing the way we would normally translate it in order for it to make sense in an English language narrative. And we lose the fact that, that, that this which the souls, which makes us think that maybe there's a bunch of people who go with them, which could be the case in this simple, uh, simple rendering of this story. But if we look closely here, we see et ha nefesh, right? That they made in Haran. It's uh, that. Abram and Sarai and perhaps Lot included, they made this soul, this nefesh in the Quran, this nefesh that would want to be connected to its source, Hashem, right? They, they would want to go to the land that's being shown to them, right? This is the same formula of et hashamayim ve et haaretz, right? We've got this all-inclusive, singular, Definite article soul. 
not souls, not a group of people. So again, this is something where it seems that the Torah, where at one level can be telling us a story, at another level is telling us about the creation of the soul, the single soul that we all share. Because now this soul is something greater than ourselves. We're all fragmented pieces of it. And hopefully we can attain this soul together again. And that's what the Torah comes to teach us how to do. Anyway, it's right in front of us, if we can read it in Hebrew. Number six, famine and descent into Egypt. Okay, so almost immediately upon arriving into the land of, of Canaan, you know, he makes a camp between Bethel and Ai. He's promised that this land will be given to his, uh, his descendants. And then there is this famine, right? And the famine was, and, and there was a famine in the land. And Abraham descended to Egypt to sojourn there because the famine was severe in the land. He didn't go to Egypt. He went, he, he went from Haran to from Haran to Canaan, but he didn't go to Egypt. He descended. He went down, right? He went down from his place. This is also interesting that Mitzrayim, the word for Egypt, um, is being used in the feminine when later on when there's an exodus from Egypt, it's in the masculine meets rhyme, right? So he's gone down into Egypt because that's where he needs to go to survive the, the famine. There's something about the land. There's something about this desire to connect to his Shem that can't sustain us. We need to somehow limit, right? This Tsar, this Tsara in Mitzrayim or Mitzrayim reminds us of limitation, right? And uh, there's something that we need to limit or some sort of limitation that we need to, uh, to go through in order to be able to survive in the land, in the desire for connection with Hashem. Okay, so they go down into Egypt and, you know, there's this whole, there's this whole issue of Sarai being a beautiful woman, and uh, Abram telling her to tell the Egyptians that they're brother and sister. Pharaoh takes uh, Sarai into his house and wants her to be his wife. Hashem hits Pharaoh and his, uh, his house with a plague. And, uh, and Pharaoh notices that mm, he understands that they're married and he, he's angry that they did this to him. And he, he tells Avram and Sarah and, and Lot to get out of Egypt. They have to go away. And doing so, they leave much wealthier than, the, than when they arrive. Okay? So that brings us to the next part. Lot and Avraham part ways. Okay, so they've returned to the place. They've gone back up to Israel, right? So, okay, Israel, I guess, is north by cardinal directions of Egypt, or its elevation is higher. But, you know, the Torah, when it's telling us up and down, maybe it's hinting at something more spiritual in the levels, right? He descended in his connection from Hashem to survive, and now that he's gone through this, this experience in Egypt, he can ascend back up to his place, right? And we see here that now he and Lot are very, very wealthy. So we're reminded here that Avram came up from Egypt. The Ya'al Avram in Mitzrayim, who the Ishto, the Kol Asher Lo. Velot imo ha gigba, right? So they came to the south. They came back up from Egypt 
from Mitzrayim in the masculine now, when we leave it, it's masculine, enter, it's feminine, right? And now they're so wealthy that the land can't sustain them both. They have so much power, they have so much with them that they have to separate ways, right? Their, their herdsmen fight with each other. And this is when Abram tells Lot, choose left or right. If you go left, I go right. If you go right, I go left. And they separate from each other because now the land is not able to sustain both these qualities. The curse has to go away. Lot has gone his way and Hashem reiterates his, uh, his promise. Okay, things have changed. Lot is gone, but I'm still promising the land to you and your descendants. Okay. Then there is this war between one group of kings and another group of kings. Lot is kidnapped. Uh, Abram arrives and saves the day. Uh, there's a lot going on in there that we just don't have time to cover here. But let's take a look at the next part. That After this war, Hashem tells Avram another time that he's going to inherit the land. And this comes about because um, Avram is getting worried. His, he doesn't have anybody to inherit him. He's been told two times he's going to inherit this land. And he doesn't have any, any offspring. And he's afraid that it's going to be the steward of his house that inherits him. And Hashem says, no, no. I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldees to give you this land and to inherit it. And Avram says, oh Lord, oh, oh, oh Lord God. And this is interesting how they, pronounce, how they render this. Because actually in Hebrew, it's, it would be, oh Lord, Lord. <laughs> right? Because... Sometimes Lord is Adonai, which means Lord. And we take the four-letter name and we pronounce it Adonai, which also gets translated as Lord. So this is Av Avram being subservient to Hashem, right? So, oh, Lord Hashem, how do I know that I'll inherit it? And he tells him, okay, make a sacrifice, we're going to make a covenant, right? There's an olot, there's a, there's a coming closer. And he tells him here, you shall surely know that your seed will be strangers in the land that is not theirs. They will be enslaved. Uh, they, they will enslave them and oppress them for 400 years. And also the nation that they will serve, I will judge. And afterwards, they will go forth with great possessions. So this sounds familiar, right? So, but the question is, what does that have to do with the price of rice in China? How do I know that I'm going to inherit this land? Ah, your offspring will be slaves. Well, this connects back to exactly what happened to, to Avram. He has the experience of entering the land, of not being able to be sustained in it, and having to go down into Mitzrayim, of being oppressed there, uh, of leaving Mitzrayim wealthier than before and coming back to his place in the land where he now separates from the curse. Ah, you're telling me that my offspring are going to go through this same experience? Now I know, now I know that they will inherit the land. Okay, number nine, Hagar. Let's take a closer look at this. Okay, just after this incident of the of talking with Hashem and, and complaining about the son and being being promised that he's going to have a son, right? Um, his wife Sarai, she's trying to help make things happen, and she gives him his her Egyptian handmaid Hagar. Okay, she's a Mitzrit. There's a limitation associated with her. And Hagar could also be read Hager, 
right? Ger is an outsider. It's even the word that's still used for converts today. Anybody who wants to convert to Judaism is called a Ger, right? An outsider. Um, in fact, we see this later on with the story of, Mo of Moses. He, he names his first son Gershom because he was a, a stranger in a foreign land, right? Anyway, what's going on with this stranger? Well, things don't work out. She's the handmaiden, but she's like, hey, I'm the one making the baby. And Sarai gets upset about this insolence. And Hagar runs off into the wilderness. Hashem does not appear to her. The angel of Hashem, right? The angel of the Lord says to her, you will conceive and bear a son and you shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard your affliction. Ishmael. Shma'a, Hashem, right, is the El, the God who has heard her affliction, right? Now, the thing is, is that Ishmael isn't the guy, and he's a wild donkey. This is the, this is the first place where we see the donkey in the narrative, and, and we end up associating this donkey with, uh, with our egoism as well later on, right? And, and, uh, and later on, when she has the son, it turns out it's kind of strange, right? She's commanded uh, to name the son Ishmael, and then in the end, Abraham, excuse me, Abraham, he's the one that names him Ishmael. Okay, number 10. El Shaddai and the circumcision. All right. So, another revelation coming here. Right? Hashem has got another, another, level of covenant to make here and here in english we see that i am the almighty god all right but in hebrew ani el shaddai el shaddai is another name for god where he's he's the god of sustenance of sufficiency right that uh, that he has everything that 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 is needed, right? And so if, you know, one more, another definition of perfection is that there's everything that's needed exactly as it's needed, nothing more, nothing less. And so now Hashem is asking uh, Avraham to, to walk before me and be perfect, right? And this perfection brings us back to the covenant of the circumcision right where everything that's needed no more no more no less right um and this is the moment this is the moment in which this this call for perfection this is when he, avram's name is made great where his name is now Abraham, right? And your name shall no longer be called Abraham, but your name uh, shall be Abraham. This He is inserted into his name. The same He that we see in Ha'aretz, Ha'shemaim, et Ha'nefesh, right? The same He. And it's very interesting if we go back to the original creation story where we have the Toldot. Of, of Adam, right, right, male and female, he created them, and he blessed them, and he named them man, Adam, and on the day that they were created. Zachor unkava baram vayvarech otam vaykra et shmam Adam bayom he baram this he ba baram right here is a obvious anagram back to avraham it's the exact same letters and through this perfection 
this additional call for perfection, this final covenant, and this insertion of the hay into Avram's name, we have this, this return to the perfection of the, of the garden, right? Where, where Avraham has now, through, will now, through his, his circumcision, complete that connection back to Hashem. And the, uh, the promise and the covenant are sealed, right? And we know this because immediately afterwards, he's told that, okay, you're going to have, you're going to have another son through, through Sarah. And you're not to name her. Her name is no longer Sarai. It is now Sarah, right? And through this, you will be, you will be given another son and you shall name him Itzhak, right? Okay. And right here, we have an Abraham fell on his face and rejoiced. Va Itzhak. Right? Well, here, when he's saying, indeed, your wife, Sarah, will bear you a son. You shall name him Itzhak. Here, Va Itzhak. And here, Itzhak. So this name, Itzhak, is connected to rejoicing, to laughter, right? To playing, even to sporting or ridicule, right? There's, a, there's this, connect, this connection now between our father Itzhak and rejoicing and this new quality that is being produced in the future generation, the first generation to, to inherit the land, or at least to inherit Abraham Avinu, our father Abraham. So that's a lot going on. There's a lot that we're missing when we're only reading it in English. I hope you find this helpful and interesting. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and, uh, and uh, comment. Share with me your ideas if, you're see, if you see anything that I've missed. Um, there's a lot of things going on, so I'm not covering everything. Share anything that you like, especially about this week's Torah portion. And I'll catch you next week with the next portion of the Torah. And we'll see what happens from here. All right. Until then, have a great time. We'll see you. Bye-bye.